You're listening to the really useful podcast. This is the tech podcast for technophobes from makeusoft.com. Welcome to the show. You are listening to the really useful podcast. My name is Christian Corley. And later on in the show, I'll be joined by Ben Stegner and Gavin Phillips as we discuss various topics to help you make better use out of the technology around you. Now, someone asked me the other day exactly what this podcast is all about. They hadn't heard it, so it's basically I had to give them the quick sell. If this is your first time, then it's really simple. At MakeUseOf.com, we have a vast network of writers contributing their knowledge and insight into various topics, most of which they specialise in. The really useful podcast from makeuseof.com takes the very best of those, digs out whichever is like most topical for a particular week or what fits together best, and we mix it in with a bit of tech news that matters, personal recommendations, and then you know that gives us a podcast. Now, so this week you will hear us discussing 30 of the most useful websites that you can find on the internet, how to get paid to use Android apps, or even get them free, the best cloud gaming services around to stream games, and uh, a look at uh, crypto giveaway scams, because no one's going to give you a crypto coin for free, let's face it. As mentioned, joining me this week are Gavin Phillips and Ben Stegner. Now, let's have a look at this. You've gone online. And you found a website, and you've uh, favorited it. You've added it to your bookmarks, as we say these days. We used to say favorite all the time, didn't we? Now it's bookmarks. How I think it was just Internet Explorer that used favorites. I That's probably what it is. Yeah. Ever. Firefox has been <laughs> bookmarks forever, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, the same with Netscape before that, yeah. And you gather them together, and you've got them, to, and uh, you've, you've got the best websites that you think are the best websites, but that's not necessarily the case. It's always good to have a curated list of top useful websites that you can just rely on uh, when the time comes, when nature calls, as it were. Uh, my uh, podcast co-host for this week, Ben Stegner, has compiled a list of 30, 30 insanely useful he- websites that will come in handy someday. Yeah, it's a lot of websites. I don't think there's any for when nature calls. I think you might need a different <laughs> list of, webs- of websites for that. But uh, yeah, we got a nice big list here that are kind of, I mean, most of us know about the really popular websites, obviously. So I, I did include stuff like YouTube, um, but there's a lot of lesser known sites that are uh, really fun to know about and they might be kind of niche, but you'll be, you'll appreciate knowing them someday. So since there's 30, I thought what we could do is maybe if I go through and give like a one sentence summary of each one, and then I'll, and if you want to stop me on any. and offer Well, before comment, you do that, do. I'm just okay. reminded of Dig. I never used Dig, but I know the name. It was I like think a curating. It was Dig. Yeah. Oh, it's still around, is it? I think it's still around. I'm not sure. It doesn't do what it used to do, which was give you great websites. Uh, really... Stumble upon? Is that what you're That's, thinking of? No, you're absolutely right. It was Stumble upon. Yes. Okay. I got so many great websites from Stumble upon. That. Yeah, you know... I used to like that. I forget where i first heard about it it might have been from a friend or something but yeah, yeah it same was just fun to just click around and see what there was um is that still yeah, there? I, I, is that still a thing this the domain is still there they shuttered it a couple of years ago um I, i'm sure there's some kind of alternative but it, that, that site was just so well made and you could yeah you could specify your interests and share stuff easily like it was really slick and I, I don't to my knowledge there's not like a really nice easy one to use that was like it well, our colleague Dan Price has compiled a list of eight stumble upon alternative sites that still oh, okay. work to pass time. So I'll include that in the show notes as well. But uh, as you were, these are 30 links. Ben? Sure. So I'll, I'll give a one sentence summary for each one. And if you want to stop me and add anything, please do. Okay. So number one is student.com. Uh, it's a place to find cheap accommodations as an international student. Uh, number two is inner body. It has a uh, interactive guides to human anatomy including all of these systems of the body that is gross uh, clean yeah that is it's it's probably it's not it's not nasty but it's definitely one if you uh you know, if you're really interested great if not probably don't need all the dirty details um 
number three is clean PNG, which has uh, free high quality PNG images with actually transparent backgrounds. Uh, Pixlr is number four. It is a, an in-browser image editor, sort of like Photoshop. Uh, number five is Pixabay. It's a free stock image website with millions of images to download for free with no attribution. Number six is PrivNote or PriveNote. Uh, it's a website where you can create a note that, that self-destructs after the person that you send it to has read it. Number seven is Skyscanner. It is a flight comparison site that lets you check prices without having to look at every airline site individually. Uh, number eight is Spot a Home. It's a website that lets you uh, rent an apartment or home for a mid to long term period. I keep saying Ooh. everything's a website. I don't need to say that every time. Um, that that particular site is uh, only really offering places in Europe right now. So right. if you're in the US, probably not relevant to you. But if you're traveling to Europe, maybe. Uh, number nine is down for everyone or just me. <laughs> this will tell you if a website is actually fully down or if it's just a problem on your end. Number 10 is Bachelor Studies. It's a comprehensive site to help you find a bachelor's program uh, anywhere in the world with a variety of filters you can use. Uh, number 11 is Ninite. This is an easy software download site where you check a bunch of boxes for the tools you want and then download them all in one go. Uh, number 12 is Lucidchart. It's a free uh, flowchart software that's easy to use in your browser. Number 13 is called Eat This Much. It is an automatic diet website where you enter details about what you want to eat and your fitness goals, and it will create meal plans for you. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, it's sort of like ChatGPT, I guess, uh, but, but does that now, uh, but this was before that, a little more customized. Uh, number 14, I love this one, Just Watch. It is does many things, but the best feature is that when you type a show or a movie in, it will tell you where uh, what streaming services you can watch that show on. Number 15 is how long to beat. You can look up any video game and it will tell you about how long it will take to finish the game, whether you're doing it just to beat the story or complete everything the game has to offer. Uh, number 16 is diff checker. You can upload two files and it will highlight the differences between them. Uh, number 17 is Dillinger. It is an online markdown editor that you can use to type uh, to your heart's content in markdown. 18 is fast.com. It's provided by Netflix and it's a very simple speed test website. Oh, that's your internet connection. Yeah, I, I usually use speedtest.net, but fast is easier to type and it's nice and clean for people yeah. who maybe aren't as experienced. There's less clutter. Uh, 19 is dictation.io. It allows you to uh, dictate text with your voice. Uh, number 20 is flight stats. You can enter any flight and see info such as the departure time and where it, what gate it's uh, departing and arriving at. Number 21, I use this all the time for the site, every time zone. You can see every hmm. time zone in the world lined up, uh, and you can also create an account to customize which time zones appear. Makes it really easy to, I'm breaking my one sentence rule here, but it makes it really easy to schedule meetings and know what time it is everywhere instead of having to click around a bunch. Uh, number 22 is PDF Escape. It's a simple online editor that lets you uh, make changes to PDFs without installing dedicated software. Number 23 is Infogram. It's a uh, free uh, infogram creator that you can use for various charts, reports, social media posts. Uh, number 24 is Alternative 2. It's a site where you can look up any software or app, and it will give you alternatives, both free and paid. Yeah, it's good to say that. I've used that a few times over the years. It is really nice, especially if something goes offline or yeah. becomes abandoned. Uh, number 25 is Jitsi Meet. It's a super simple video conferencing app where you just type in uh, a name for your call and anyone can join it without an account or any other nonsense. Number 26 is random.org. It has a bunch of randomizers, which you can use to do something like roll a dice or flip a coin truly randomly. Number 27 is Squoosh. It's an easy image compressor that lets you see your changes in real time. Number 28 is Name Check. It lets you type a username and you can see everywhere that that username has been taken. So you can set up if you want to use one name across YouTube, Slack, Twitter, or whatever. You can see it all in one place if it's available. Will that also help you to check out where you've used your username yeah, it well. could be the same thing too. Maybe yeah. if you're if you're trying to change your username on every site and you want to see where you've used your old name versus your new name, um, the only I know the only place I currently use my old username is on Twitter because it's an inactive account has it locked and I want it, but uh, they have it stuck. So 
maybe they'll clean that up sometime. And then two more here. Number 29 is Manuals Lib or Manuals Lib. Um, it is an online manual library where you can find the instruction booklet for pretty much anything you can think of. And then number 30 is Cloud Convert. It's a simple online file converter where you can convert basically anything to anything else for free. Wow. And uh, yeah, they're very, some as you can see, a lot of these are very just like simple use, like one specific thing. Uh, it's the kind of thing where if you bookmark it, you'll be appreciative. You'll appreciate it uh, when you need it. Yeah, it's a really good uh, collection of links. I'll uh, there's there's a few that I'm going to check out further, such as um, uh, the one that I've opened but can't be bothered checking the tab, so I'm just scrolling up. Uh, Dictation.io. Uh, <laughs> I th- yeah, I think I'm going to check that one out definitely. I think I need to actually try that myself because I've I, I think I talked about this on the show, but in our Slack, I've asked people if anyone uses like voice dictation software because I type so much, and it would be nice to have an option. I, the the built-in feature in Windows is just terrible. Like it, it feels like you you spend more time correcting it than you do saving time speaking. Um, yeah. But I've really appreciated using the speaking feature on my phone recently, so I was looking for something like that for uh, from from my computer. No, that's interesting. I'm just l- looking at namechuk.com. I'm trying to work out whether the ones I'm using are in red or the ones I'm using are in green. I think green means name is available on this website. Ah, right, okay. So, listen, there's uh, something you need to know about your browser. It has a search engine built into it, which is probably using Google search one way or another. For instance, uh, DuckDuckGo uses Google search. Obviously, Google search uses Google search. Bing uses Bing search, but, uh, you know, that has comes with its own privacy issues. If you want a private alternative search engine that is Google and Bing free, then Brave might be the one to check out. It has its own index. It stopped relying on Google previously. It used um, Bing for a time, but now no longer does. So uh, I'm not going to go in depth with this because this is kind of made basically a bit of advice. This is a tip, basically. If you're looking for some proper Google and Bing free search results, then check out Brave. DuckDuckGo uses Google. It strips out the tracking and all that stuff. That doesn't You don't get that with DuckDuckGo, but you still get the Google results. With, with Brave, you get something completely new. So it's worth having a look at that and of course uh, using the brave browser as well although you know browsers are another matter entirely because nearly all the browsers are based on chromium i'd love to try a different search engine just solely to i mean i know one person changing isn't going to do anything but just to you know reduce google's overwhelming monopoly yeah um i every time i've done it in the past i mean i've pretty much only ever tried um duck duck go and it just it the results just aren't there it's more it's i mean if you're just googling you know youtube to get to youtube like that's that's one thing but when you're trying to find like specific troubleshooting information or like there will be like a reddit post that i remember i saw uh, three months ago and i'm trying to share with a friend and if on if i google on google you know, like five words from the post reddit it pulls it right up whereas trying to find that kind of thing on duck duck go or bing is like impossible so I, I, I use Google just because of that. Like, it's just so good at finding what I want, even though I don't want to support the company, you know? So yeah, yeah. if I could find a good search engine that didn't have all that crap uh, baggage along with it, that'd be nice. Did you know that you can kind of get Android apps for free without breaking the law? Well, how? How? <laughs> wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked because I'm here to tell you. <laughs> okay, look, um, there's methods that you can use to do this, and they're not always going to be 100% free, but there is a, a great way that you can reduce how much you're paying for apps massively, maybe even down to zero. You start off, and this this is an Android-only technique. This won't work for iPhone, okay? Um, you start off by using the Google Play wishlist feature, um, adding everything that you haven't bought yet but want to buy to your google play wish list okay next you use google opinion rewards this is a survey tool that will pay you for answering questions and it will add the money into your google play credits you can probably see where we're going with this now it's typically 10 to 30 cents that's a rough 
kind of currency conversion by me there. Uh, for example, the screenshot I've done in this, you'll find the article in the show notes, uh, I got 14 pence for answering a question about a YouTube recommendation. Did, Baltimore, did Bob Mortimer mastermind a daring heist in a campsite tuck shop? So, yeah, we've got a detailed guide on using Google Opinion Rewards. But basically, you install Google Opinion Rewards, you go to places. You go shopping, you go to landmarks, you go to museums, whatever. It asks you questions about it later on. It asks you where you went, how you paid, and if a receipt can be photographed. Now, there's no compulsion to do this. Payment, I've um, played around with this, and payment doesn't appear to be different based on whether you upload the photo of receipt or not. In fact, quite often, I just say I pay by cash. You then check your Google Play Store offers. If anything coincides with anything that you want, then you're going to get a massive discount. And then you've got your Google Play credit from the Opinion Rewards, potentially giving it to you for nothing. You can also find app and game deals on a website called playstoresales.com. So that's a good way of doing it. And finally, you can look for bargains on the Amazon App Store. It doesn't mean you have to have the Amazon App Store for Android installed on your Android device, which may not be ideal. And the, the apps that you install via it update in a different way, and it can be a little bit irritating uh, at times. But that's another way to get Android games for less than they are, or free, compared with Google Play. There's also another tool called um, Mist Play, which pays you money for playing games, and then you could use that credit later on so yeah loads of ways of doing this that's really interesting um because every now and then i do scroll through the play store and i look at some of the games and i think god that's so really quite pricey these days so getting well, a bit of yeah. a discount on them is really good um sid Meier's railroads was... came out last week or the week before this is like a 15 year old pc game like a sequel to railroad tycoon yeah yeah and it's like 11 pounds Oh, that is expensive. I'm thinking to myself, well, I've I got this for £3 on GOG.com. I'll just play like, it on my computer. Yeah, on a much bigger screen with better <laughs> controls. <laughs> exactly. I didn't think no. it through. No. One thing I do, I'll add to this, is uh, I, I, as, a, as a frequent Reddit user, I've subscribed to a subreddit called something like Google Play Deals or whatever. Okay. It's very similar to that name it'd be that name or around that name yeah uh, and it regularly posts you know people who are really into finding deals on the google play store and so every now and then they, they they do pop up with a bit of a gem so um that's worth looking at as well long running listeners of this podcast will recall that uh, back in the day i went all in on Google Stadia. <laughs> and uh, it's it doesn't exist anymore. So at one point, it was one of the cloud gaming services for streaming video games to any device, particularly, you know, low specification PCs, giving you AAA games with great graphics on low spec PCs if, and laptops if you had a decent network connection. Uh, Stadia has been retired. The uh, only good that it did really was that it re everyone got refunded and the controllers were given bluetooth functionality i now use the controllers with my uh, steam deck quite good but what does this mean what what has happened to the cloud gaming uh landscape since the death of stadia since it was put down by google i'm, I'm a little bit sorry about this still to be honest with you well gavin I have to tell you that things have changed a little bit over the past couple of years with cloud gaming platforms, but there are, uh, you know, two or three that continue to dominate. You can probably guess which three those are. In fact, I'm going to ask you, which three do you think they are? I'm going to guess that the best option has to be uh, NVIDIA's GeForce Now. Uh, yeah. And I'm saying that because that's the one I use as well. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Um, so, yeah. So, GeForce Now, PlayStation Now, which um, it used to be called something else, but it's now been uh, folded into PlayStation Now. And Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is a portion of the Game Pass, uh, but you only get it with Game Pass Ultimate. Those are the three kind of premium options for uh, streaming services. There are others, though. Uh, there's a service called Utomic, which is relatively new. 
and that has 1,415 games across all genres and 250 titles are available to play in the cloud. It's available for Windows PC, Android and Samsung and LG Smart TVs and comes with a free 14-day trial. We've got Antstream Arcade. This is retro gaming. Almost nothing is new. It's almost all retro. And it works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, Amazon TV and tablets for $1 a month. Uh, so you find things like R-Type, Pac-Man, Earthworm Jim, all manner of uh, retro games are on there. And do you know what? I'm guilty of never trying Antstream Arcade. Oh, yeah. I've, t- I'm not, I've never even heard of it, but I love a bit of R-Type. So uh, Yeah, yeah, me too. That, that would get me in. <laughs> uh, Amazon Luna. Now, Amazon Luna is a funny thing. It appears to have slotted into the hall left by Google Stadia a little too easily. In the sense that it's almost the same as Google Stadia. It uh-huh. even has its own controller. It has a seven-day trial. You pay $9.99 a month for 100 games. You also... Oh, this is... Why, why did they do this? You also have the option to pay $17.99 a month to play Ubisoft titles in the cloud. 18 bucks a month? Yeah! I just don't understand it. <laughs> I love Splinter Cell games, but I wouldn't pay that. There's also $4.99 a month for Jackbox Party games. They can be quite fun, I have to say. But okay. It, it, again, I think you can buy a pack, a whole pack of Jackbox Party games on something like Steam. And oh, was this one of your it, recommendations a few months ago, Jack? May have been Ben's. Oh, Ben's, I know Ben right, quite yeah. likes them. But you could buy like a whole set of Jackbox Party games for probably five to ten bucks, oh. and then use the free version of GeForce Now yeah. because it doesn't need a high level of streaming quality. That you know you don't need like HD quality for these games. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we've got Black Nut, which boasts five hundred games for fifteen dollars ninety nine a month and uses browser only. So essentially, you can use it on anything. Uh, I have to say, I mean, Antstream and Newtomic aside, I don't see the, um, the the non-premium services really lasting. Black Nut, I only discovered Black Nut by chance. There was, a, there's a, there was actually an eighth one that I found, but it appeared to be India only, so it wasn't particularly useful to most of us. Luna just seems to be a rare misstep i think was it sort of amazon seems to be playing catch up with a lot of things these days don't they rather yeah, than sort yeah. of leading the way with new services they sort of go oh gosh everyone's doing that we better do that too sort of yes. sort of how microsoft were about you know 15 20 years ago where they would be like oh we better react to that now rather yeah. than leading the market um another example of sort of digressing is amazon suddenly going oh we're not going to do a generative ai we're just going to give the platform for it It, i mean that happens as businesses get larger and larger doesn't it Mm, absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. so um so that that's what you can use for uh, streaming but as gavin notes geforce now has a free tier and you get i think an hour or two hours of play it's not at the highest uh, yeah, it's one-hour sessions, but standard gaming servers. Um, I should probably note that priority members pay nine dollars ninety-nine a month and get ten eighty p and sixty frames per second. Ultimate members, which is a new tier, pay nineteen dollars ninety-nine a month on GeForce Now. They get four K resolution at one hundred twenty frames per second, eight-hour sessions, the fastest GeForce RTX thirty eighty rig servers. So, uh, if streamed gaming is your thing which one do you do uh i have a priority membership which i sort of i turn it on and off depending on where i'm going to be and what i'm doing um i have used the ultimate tier um but as these services are also uh obviously dependent on your internet connection um often where i am there's no point in me having an ultimate membership tier because it can't stream enough data so priority does fine uh now we um we've referred to crypto scams several times already and there's there's one that's kind of seems to be a bit of a bee in your bonnet at the moment yeah one of the other uh scams i wanted to talk about that has been bothering me for a reason i'll explain in a moment is the um 
live stream scam on YouTube. So if you follow the tech space at all, you, know, you might be familiar with Linus Tech Tips, which is a big YouTube channel that's been around for a long time. Um, a, maybe a month and a half ago, late April, I want to say, um, they suffered a hack where um, they opened up an attachment from a supposed um, sponsorship, and it was actually a scam document that allowed them to, uh, their, their channel was compromised. I won't get into the details, but the way that this scam works is um, a channel, a legitimate YouTube channel is taken over by a method like that, and then the person that takes over the channel, they change the name of the channel, um, and they delete all of their past videos, and they so it looks like something like Tesla or a Bitcoin exchange or whatever. And then what they do is that they broadcast a live stream that is generally, uh, in this case, so we'll, we'll say Tesla. Um, in this case, they'll broadcast a live stream of Elon Musk on a podcast or giving a speech at his computer or on stage at some event or whatever. That's an actual recording, but it's just them looping it over and over. And then they'll put a thing on the screen, a, a fake tweet from Elon Musk that says your life will change if you scan the QR code. And they have a link in the chat. And if you open up that link, it's just a classic, if you send me a thousand Bitcoin, I'll send, or, you know, a thousand dollars, I'll send you 2000 back, whatever, like double, I'll double back, whatever I send you, obviously a scam. Um, and in the chat in YouTube, you can, you can limit your chat for a live stream to um, only people who've been subscribed to you for a certain amount of time. So they abuse this feature, the one I'm looking at right now, it says messages are only from people who subscribe to this channel for 20 years or longer. And you might realize that that's longer than YouTube's been around. So yeah. obviously no one's been subscribed to this channel for 20 years. So if you follow this, the channel that's been hacked, you'll see them broadcasting this and you might think it's a legitimate thing. But the thing that really uh, gets me upset is before this call, before this recording, I just searched for Tesla live stream on YouTube. Okay. And there are three, there's, there's one legitimate Tesla, like a, like a, stream from a few months ago. Um, there's a couple and I'm looking at one, two, three. So there's a, a real one, three fake ones, a real one, three more fake ones. Uh, and then, and then at least one more fake one. So every single one of these is broadcasting the exact same clip of Elon Musk talking at some event that they have 5,000 people watching 4,000, 6,000, 5,000, like thousands of people are watching these streams and they're all the exact same thing. Scan the code, get, get your money doubled limiting the subscribe the um chat so yeah. I've, I've gone in and actually reported these and just said you know this is a scam their the channel is hijacked but it's so frustrating there's so many things that youtube could do to stop this like you shouldn't be allowed to delete huge amounts of videos on your channel like that you shouldn't be allowed to limit your chat to longer than youtube's existed like subscriber time things like that so the long and short of it is if you ever, if there's a YouTube channel you follow that suddenly starts broadcasting a Tesla live stream or a crypto bonus thing, it's, that's a scam. The channel's been hacked and taken over. You should report it to YouTube and tell them that the channel's been compromised because um, obviously that's not actually the channel that you care about doing that. So yeah, with a channel with big reach like Linus Tech Tips, I mean, you could have you know 50,000, 100,000 people watching a live stream, quote unquote, like this. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a bee in my bonnet because it, it it's really frustrating to me that you can just, I can just search three words and see six scams within two seconds and they're all the exact same thing. And these problems have been going on for months. It is rather insane. And also with, um, with YouTube, it is immensely big, isn't it? So there are, you know, the millions of channels that are on there, you would hope a company of Google size or alphabet size that they have the facility to manage scams pretty swiftly. Especially when it's like the exact same thing. Like yeah. every single one that I'm almost everyone I've seen is either, it's either Tesla live stream or like Elon Musk talking about cryptocurrency. It's always that um, there've been one or two with one, someone else, someone else big in the tech world. There was, Oh, there was one where the day uh, Theo Joe, a YouTuber talked about, it was a little bit different where, you got a link that led you to like a fake video of Google CEO talking about changes to YouTube that you had to do. That was a little bit different, but yeah, there's so many things they could do to limit this scams reach. Um, obviously channels being taken over is a problem. You know, I don't want someone's, you know, years of hard work to go down the drain because they got hacked. Um, but there are like ways to prevent this that you shouldn't be able to just change a channel's name uh, and delete all its videos and, and, and stream this crap. So yeah, very, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there isn't really anything that you that, that can be done other than again that magic word, 
vigilant, being aware of it, um, and letting other people know that it's happening. And as Ben has done, report the channels when you see them, and hopefully the people at YouTube, the uh, team managing, looking out for scams and other uh, unsuitable videos, you know, they're very quick to uh, pull down copyright information. They should be as quick to uh, pull down material like this. Yeah, especially for a live stream. I think they're a little bit more sensitive about that because it's ongoing. So, you know, if somebody was, for example, live streaming something explicit, they'd be quicker to pull that down versus a video that's like one and done. I suppose, I'm just theorizing that. I'm not sure. But when you report, YouTube will email you and say, thanks for the report. And I've gotten several emails saying we took action based on your report. So it definitely does help. Um, I just explained, you know, the channel's been hijacked. It's broadcasting a Bitcoin scam. That's pretty much all you have to say. Um, yeah, it does help. And I figure if it saves one person from sending their money to a scammer, it's worth it. So. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast. I will be back with Gavin or Ben next week for another show. Until then, take care. It's goodbye from us. (laughs) 